In this video, we're going to discuss nested quantifiers and how to negate them. In an upcoming video, we are going to discuss how to take a statement like every real number has an additive inverse and be able to write it using quantifiers like I have here for all x there exists a y such that x plus y equals zero. For now, however, I just want to discuss when is this true or is this true or how do I know what is the process involved? So we can see here that we have a domain of all real numbers, every real number. So in this domain, because it's all real numbers, in order to show that this is true, we would have to use reasoning and proof because we can't go through an exhaustive list of all the real numbers because the real numbers are infinite. So we will talk so much more about reasoning and proof in the upcoming three, several lessons, more than three, I guess. And however, let's say I said that X was the set of numbers zero, one, and two. Now this is a completely different scenario because what I have is I have a list of values and what I can do instead is, again, we're still going to assume Y is just any real number. So now what I'm saying for all X in my set of numbers, there exists some Y that is a real number such that X plus Y equals zero. Or I'm saying zero plus blank equals zero zero plus, sorry, one plus blank equals zero and two plus blank equals zero. And if I can find a value to replace, to make that statement true, and those values all belong to the real numbers, which they do, then essentially I have proven it's true. So I've cycled through each of these numbers and shown that it is true. So let's take a look at this example. We're gonna let P of X, Y denote that X times Y equals Y times X. We'll assume that the domain is real numbers. So I have two different statements here. And before we talk about whether they are true, I want to talk about what I notice about them. And that is here I have for all X and for all Y. Here I have for all Y and for all X. So essentially what I'm asking is, first of all, is this statement true? And then I'm saying, is it still true if I change the order of X and Y? So what exactly does our statement mean? This first statement says, for all real numbers X and for all real numbers Y, x, y, or x times y equals y times x. So is this a true statement? Well, yes, in fact, this is true. How do I know it's true? This is essentially the commutative property of multiplication. I'm saying that the order doesn't matter. I'm going to end up at the same product. So I've shown that the first one is true not through a formal proof, but number two says is for all Y and for all X. So essentially it means this exact same thing, but now I'm saying for all real numbers Y and for all real numbers X, is that statement still true? And yes, in fact it is because as we had said before, the order doesn't matter. So in this one, both of these statements are true. It didn't matter if X came first or Y came first. Now let's take a look at a different example. It says let Q X Y denote X plus Y equals five. Again, the domain is all real numbers. So let's start with our first statement. And our first statement says, is it true that for all real numbers X, there exists a real number Y 
such that x plus y equals 5. So the question is, is this a true statement? So it's really important here to understand the for all and there exists. So this is saying for every single real number, does there exist some other number such that when we add them together, we end up with 5? And of course, this statement is going to be true. Because for all real numbers, for instance, 2, what number could I add to 2 to get 5? 3. So what about 1 half? 1 half plus what equals 5? Again, we're dealing with any of the real numbers. So 1 half plus 4 and a half or 9 halves would equal 5. So that is always going to be true. Now, my second statement is a little bit different. Is there exists a y, so there exists a real number y such that for all real numbers x, x plus y equals 5. So some might say, well, that is the exact same thing that we just did in number one. And that is unfortunately not the case here. We're saying there exists some real number such that for all real numbers x, x plus y equals 5. So we're saying, is there one number y, just one number, it can't change based on each case such that for all real numbers x, x plus y equals 5. So let's let y equal 0. Well, if x is 1, then I have 1 plus 0 equals 5, and that is not true. So the only time that would work is if y is 4. OK, so for the sake of argument, let's let y equal 4. Well, then let's say x equals 2. Well, then I get 2 plus 0 doesn't equal 5. 2 plus 4 doesn't equal 5. So we can see that the second statement is false. Let's take a look at a couple of practice together. Here we have u is the real numbers, so the domain is all real numbers. Pxy denotes x times y equals 0. And we're given several different propositions here to find the truth values for. So we'll start with the first one for all x and for all y. So for all x, then for all y, pxy is true. So essentially they're saying for any real number x and any real number y, x times y equals 0. It's pretty easy to determine fairly quickly that this is false. And remember, to show something's false, all I have to do is show a counterexample. So 2 times 3 equals 0, obviously not true. This is a counterexample because for all x and for all y tells me I can choose any x I want and any y I want, and x times y would be equal to 0. So again, that is, in fact, false. Let's look at the next one. For all x, so for any x I can think of, there exists some y such that x times y equals 0. So for any x I can think of, say 13, can I think of a number that would give me a product of 0? Yes. What about negative 1 half? Can I multiply by something to get 0? Yes. Now, in this example, that space, that thing, that y that exists happens to be the same value, but that's not um, necessary. It is necessary in this case because obviously if we take something times 0, we get 0. But it's not necessary for the quantifiers. Let's look at the next one. There exists some x for all y, p of x is true. So this one can get a little bit tricky. Now this one is still going to be true, but I want you to pay attention to this in our next example where it's going to be a little bit different. So again, this one's going to be true because it says there exists some x that for all of y, this is true. 
So there exists some x such that for any y, for all y's, so 2 and 4 and 19 and negative 37, that I'm going to get a 0. Now, in this case, yes, I'm still going to be using 0 as that space, but this one's tricky because this one happens to be true because 0 times anything is 0. But if my statement up here were a little bit different, this quite often will be a false statement because this is saying there exists one x such that it is true for all y's. So hopefully that'll make more sense when we do our next example. And then for our last one, there exists some x and there exists some y. And of course we know that this is true. That's saying I can find an example that shows that this is true. And obviously we've already shown several examples. Negative uh, 37 times 0 equals 0. 0 times negative 4 thirds equals 0. We get the idea that all you'd have to do for there exists is just show one example. Here's one for you to try. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and press pause on this video and try these questions for yourself first, and then we're going to go over them. So when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So this is a very similar question, except for now, instead of addition, we're dealing with division. And it says, u is the universe of real numbers. Pxy denotes x divided by y equals one. Find the truth values. So again, the first one, pretty straightforward. We're saying for all x's and all y's, when we divide them, we get one. Well, obviously this is false. And all I have to do to show that it's false is to show a counterexample. So 10 divided by two equals one is in fact not true. So that's false because it doesn't work all of the time. The next one says for all x, there exists some y such that this is true. Now, this one actually is false, and we want to say that it's true, but it's false because we're dealing with real numbers. And so even though um, I'm going to show you the, the one case in which this is not true, so normally we could say for all x, so for any x that I can think of, say 18 there exists some y, and this y can change, so there's some number that I can divide to get one. And of course, we would say, yes, that's true, because if x is 18, just make y 18, and if x is negative 32, just make y negative 32. And when I divide those, I get one, and I would say you're correct. However, because we're saying for all x's, for every value of x that is a real number, we can find some number such that when I divide I get one. Unfortunately, is false because, I'm going to move this guy out of the way, because one of the real numbers is zero. And zero divided by anything I can think of for y is never ever going to give me one. So even though it works all of the time, except for when x is zero. Unfortunately, that makes it false because I can provide a counterexample. So let's look at the next one. There exists some x such that for all y, this is true. So we're saying x has to be just one value such that when I choose a y, any y that I want, that I'm going to get one. Well, this unfortunately is going to be false as well because there exists some x such that this is true tells me that it's just one x value. So say x is 15. Well, that's going to work when y is 15. But if x is 15 and y is 32, that doesn't work anymore. So this one is false because we're essentially saying we can fix some x value such that it's true for all y values. And of course that is false. 
for the last one, there exists some x and some y such that it's true. And obviously this is true because we can show 13 divided by 13 is 1. And that's all we need to do for there exist is show that it is possible. And for our last question together in this video, let pxy denote that x is equal to negative y. And we want to find the negation of this statement. So this is the first time we're doing a negation of a quantified statement. When we negate a quantified statement, essentially what we're trying to do is we want no negation to precede a quantifier. So what I'm being asked to do is I'm being asked to find the negation of for all x there exists a y such that pxy. And what I need to do is think about how am I going to, I'm going to make this one a different color, how am I going to negate this? So we talked about negating quantifiers and um, a few videos ago. And what we're going to do is essentially we're going to just start by taking the negation, that was a bad one, the negation of for all x, which of course the negation of for all x gives me there exists an x such that the negation of the rest of this And I'm still not there because I still have a negation in front of a quantifier. So now I'm going to keep going. I've got there exists an x and now I'm negating this. So I'm saying for all y and then negating what's left, which is p x y. And for this one, we are in fact done. And of course, we always want to think about what does our solution mean? So now we're saying the negation of for all x, there exists some y such that x equals negative y. We're saying there exists a real number x such that for all real numbers, for all real numbers y, x equals, or x does not equal negative y. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at translating with nested quantifiers or what quantified statements mean in English.